Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is Bridget Skelton and I'm a registered nurse with CareVita Home Care. And today I wanted to bring a little short video to share with you a little bit about the different types of precautions and the advice out there about the different types of masks that are being advised for people to wear. So number one, how does this COVID-19 virus, how is it spread typically in the community setting? Well, we have talked a lot about what the CDC recommends with hand washing and appropriate personal protective equipment, but what does that actually mean? Well, the virus, the COVID-19 virus is typically spread through droplets, meaning if someone coughs, sneezes, or touches their eyes, nose, mouth, face, uh, and comes in contact with those, those droplets, and then they touch a surface that you then go and you touch that same surface, and you touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, you could become contaminated with the virus. Also, if you become in pro close proximity, not maintaining social distancing and less than six feet, and they cough and sneeze into the air, uh, even if they don't have, they don't know they have the virus, if they think it's just seasonal allergies, right? Uh, and they start coughing and sneezing into the air and you come in contact with those droplets and they do contain the virus, then that is a portal of entry into your body. So that's why the CDC recommends the surgical masks for people that are initiating droplet precautions, right? And taking care of someone in an assisted living or in someone's personal home. If they have respiratory symptoms, uh, you'll want to wear a mask and you want your client or your patient or your family member to wear a mask. The theory is my mask protects me. I mean, protects you. Your mask protects me, right? So if we both wear a mask, if I'm coughing and sneezing, it's going to go into my mask. It's not going to go into the air. So that protects you. The same token, if you are coughing and sneezing, it goes into the air, uh, it, that will get into my eyes, nose, mouth, and lungs. So if you're wearing a mask, it protects me. Now, what is all this talk about the N95 mask and aerosols, and what does that mean? Well, this virus is contained in a droplet, but when you do a procedure that makes it an aerosol, um, it's called an aerosol generating procedure, then it does become a tiny little particle that needs a special filter in a mask like an N95 mask because it can go in, into the air and be breathed in even beyond six feet and linger there for hours, right? So that is when the N95 mask comes in handy. That's when you want to have the N95 mask. So what generates aerosols? Um, in hospital settings and clinical settings, it's typically mechanical ventilation, um, deep suctioning, uh, any type of procedure with a high flow oxygen or positive pressure um, where you're going to come in contact with an aerosol mask. Uh, also, in a home setting or an assisted living setting, sometimes you may have CPAP patients or a person wearing a CPAP machine. Because of that positive pressure, it can generate some uh, aerosols and also nebulizer treatments. Um, some things that don't cause aerosols are um, oxygen, re regular standard oxygen on a concentrator with a nasal cannula um, and uh, inhalers. They do not cause aerosols, but nebulizer treatments and CPAP machines can. So that's when you want to think about if you're going to be coming in contact with someone doing those procedures, you want to consider wearing that N95 mask because that is when it does become an aerosol and can get in between the gaps in that surgical mask um, and or under that surgical mask. You also want to make sure for both precautions that you're doing proper hand hygiene, uh, hand washing, and you're also uh, wearing eye protection during that. So uh, that is the difference between the different types of precautions, airborne precaution versus droplet precaution. If you have any questions or you want to reach out for further clarification, feel free to message me. Uh, you can email me at bridgets at caravita.com. You can also call our office. And all of this information is also found on the CDC website. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is to prevent the overuse of N95 masks unnecessarily and um, you know, use up the supply that our uh, healthcare providers in a hospital setting need. It is very important that they have their N95 mask because when they come in contact with those aerosols, they can breathe them right into their lungs. And that's when they can become infected. And if our healthcare providers are infected, they're gonna infect everybody else that they come in contact with. So it's very important. This is our social responsibility to understand how, how personal protective equipment saves lives how it protects you,
and how it protects me. Again, my mask protects you. Your mask protects me. Thanks so much and have a blessed day, everybody. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Bridget Skelton and I'm a registered nurse with Care Vita Home Care. Today, I just wanted to share with you um, a few practical tips on how to keep your home free from germs and to help keep your family safe during this time. As many of us start to return to work or return into or are working in a healthcare setting where we may be caring for someone with COVID-19, it's important to understand just some basic principles behind infection control and what we can do to prevent the spread of infection in our home. So one of the things that my husband does, he's working with patients that have COVID-19. And when he gets home, we have a dedicated space in the garage where he removes the clothes that he's worn that day and he keeps his underwear on. Uh, he puts them in a basket and then he makes sure that he wipes off with either sanitizer wipes or he uses a, a household cleaner and a towel to wipe off his cell phone, keys, wallet, and belt if he has one. He will also leave his shoes in the garage and then he will sanitize his hands with hand sanitizer prior to going inside. That way he doesn't touch the doorknob with contaminated hands. And then he'll go up and shower and then he is okay for us to, to give him a hug and say hello and we missed you and, and all that good stuff. And we have a two year old so then he can pick Noah up and hold him. So that's what we do to prevent bringing in any outside germs. And, and I did this when I worked as a nurse too. So we would always, in, in the hospital setting. So this is just a best practice anyway, especially removing the shoes prior to going inside. Hand washing is key too. So you wanna make sure that you don't come into the home with dirty hands. So if you haven't had a chance to use hand sanitizer in the garage, you wanna come in and wash your hands first prior to even showering because you wanna make sure you touch as few items with contaminated hands as possible. Um, some other things that we do with our groceries is we do try to put them on the counter in one dedicated space and then individually wipe them down with like a, a solution, a cleaning solution on a paper towel or sanitizer wipe prior to putting them away in the pantry or refrigerator. Um, that's just a comfort level that we have. I've read articles that say it's not necessarily um, necessary, but it is a best practice for us and our family, especially the produce. So I do soak those in hot soapy water for 20 seconds, rinse them, dry them, and put them away. So uh, especially for apples or things you're gonna be biting into um, that don't have a peel, like a banana or an orange. Um, some other things that we do at home, we're a blended family. So we are bringing two households together. So we make sure when our daughter comes that she showers immediately and then we also make sure she arrives into a clean environment. So we have cl we clean the bathrooms and wipe down all the doorknobs and handles and everything that you can uh, come in contact with regularly, light switches, things like that. We're regularly wiping down those most commonly touched surfaces in our home. So I hope this provides you with a little bit of um, knowledge and uh, empowerment to know uh, that you can protect yourself. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is wearing a mask. When in public, grocery shopping, or coming in contact with people, we should be wearing masks. My mask protects you, your mask protects me. Uh, and really, I think that this is the way that we're gonna reduce the spread of this infection through the summer months as we lead on into fall, is by both parties wearing a mask. So. I hope everybody stays safe and healthy and God bless.